Okay, we are back. How long has it taken? Her? Oh, so we're probably from Saber's perspective. 99.999% sure that's what's happening because we got kidnapped and then it started an interlude. So yeah, we are back. How long has it taken her to notice that something is wrong? She wakes up to a strange feeling and goes out into the hallway. Shiro? The first thing that... The first... The... The first thinks that the feeling... Wait, oh, she... F <laughs> I just can't read. She first thinks that the feeling might be coming from her master. It is because that strange feeling is coming from Amiya Shiro's room. Jeez, is he still training magic? The, go the golden-haired girl Saber sighs. It's good that he's enthusiastic, but he will collapse unless he rests while he can. And when she decides to go warn him, she realizes her own mistake. She gasps after confirming it. The strange feeling isn't coming from Shiro's room. Under the moonlight, a string, thin as her hair, runs through the darkness. The string is going to Shiro's room from outside. A thin string that even the boundary field here did not catch. If one is to give praise to the one who pulled off such a thing, one also needs to give praise to Saber for noticing such a thing. There's no time to think. The girl turns into a knight in an instant and runs outside. She runs through the empty town. There's no hesitation in Saber as she runs. She knows where she must go. She only needs to follow the string, the, be the beat of her master. The only thing is, she has to do... The only thing she has to do is to run as fast as she can. It makes no difference whether her destination is the enemy's territory, nor how many traps might await her. She has sworn to protect her master, so anything that might befall her is negligible. It is a mountain stained with vast amounts of magical energy. Ghosts of the dead are flying above like crows, and the trees are covered with invisible blood. The collected magical energy, the stolen souls, remain here, and the mountains should, be con should consume anyone that may approach it. If there, is a th if there is such a thing as a place to die, this place is a perfect example. She goes in without hesitation. She had no intention to stop from the start. If this place is hell, she has to save her master all the more. She runs at the stone steps. The trap she had anticipated are not there. The mountain gate is within her view, and she should, and she should reach it with one more kick from her magical energy-filled legs. But her advance stops right there. No, it is stopped by the enemy. On the stairs leading to the mountain gate stands a servant. His name is Sasaki Kojiro, the servant assassin, the protector of Ryodo Temple, wielding the longsword... Monoho Shizo Shizao. Oh yeah, they already did. They already meet in this route, and because there was the night, didn't, wasn't there a night where Saber went out on her own again? It's been so long since I've recorded any of this, which means it's been even longer. Like it's been so long since I've uploaded any of this, which means it's been so much longer since I've actually recorded any of this. But I'm pretty sure that has happened, where she went out at night, and then he clapped her cheeks really hard. Saber's mind is stern as she raised her invisible air. Her master is on the other side of the mountain gate. But the servant in front of her is way too strange. He reveals his true name willingly. He does not have a stance, and his cool enmity is transparent. She cannot figure out his power because of his transparency. She can see his powers as a servant. Assassin is not a strong servant, so it should be easy to defeat him. Her instincts are telling her something different, that she cannot beat him in a normal duel. I do not have any business with you. Move, Assassin. She, she suppresses the strange unease and glares at Assassin. There's only one more step until they are both within, within range, up or down. If either one moves, a fatal attack should be executed. Did you not hear me? I told you to move, Assassin. Her final warning. The swordsman with a longsword calmly responds, responds to her words. I see. So you would like to pass this, pass this mountain gate, Saber. Her green eyes glare at Assassin for asking such a foolish question. He must like the answer. The longsword dances through the night and in an arc. Then, force your way through. You should hurry, or your master's life will be gone. He laughs in a cool manner. Assassin! Or was that in the fate route when that happened? I think it might have been the fate route where they fought. Yeah, 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 it was. Because that was the only time he appeared in the fate route, was it not? don't remember. I believe it. I believe it was. Saber charges in reply. The longsword comes down at her at the same moment, 
and she repels it with her invisible sword. The clash of the swords echoes through the summit. Their powers are equal, but that is not an advantage for her. She is impatient, and the enemy she, she bleh, the enemy she must defeat quickly is a strong one that would be hard to beat even without any time constraints. Shiro, please. She grits her, she grits her teeth and prays in her head. That opening, that excess part of her, is permeating her body. The battle does not end. The mountain gate is too far away. Interlude out. Castra extends her fingers. Damn. I want to fight back, but my body will not move. My senses are taken away, and I'm sure she will eliminate my body in a matter of seconds. Sayonara. Goodbye, boy. If you're going to mourn, mourn that you became a master with such small skills. My body does not move and accepts the finger of death. I resist the urge to close my eyes and keep glaring at Castor. Wow, you are such a good boy. I like such good efforts. Castor sneers at my resistance and puts her fingers on my command spell. Oh, even my free will is numbing. In my fading consciousness, clang. I hear a sound like crashing swords from the other side of the mountain gate. What happened? Okay. <laughs> What kind of, I, there was a, definitely a moment there where I thought the game crashed. I'm not going to lie. What kind of miracle is it? I hear tens of sounds cutting through the air and numerous arrows pierce the ground in front of me. Caster instantly retreats, her robe fluttering behind her. What? There are arrows pierced in the ground in front of Caster. The 13 arrows were shot from above. They were probably all shot at the same time, and I'm sure it would have gotten Caster if there had been one more arrow. The owner of the arrows is standing on top of the mountain gate. The knight in red jumps down to the ground, empty-handed. <laughs> I thought you'd be dead by now, but I guess you're pretty tenacious. The man, Archer says so while standing in front of me, as if to protect me from Caster. You? Why? I just happened to drop by. Don't worry about it. So, how's your body? I should have cut Caster's string with that attack. Huh? After he says so, I check my hand. It moves. My frozen body has its freedom returned with just one attack by Archer. It moves. Caster's binding is gone, but... That's good. Do what you want now, or so I would like to say. But, do not move if you don't want to be killed by her. If you move recklessly... <laughs> Archer! What is Assassin doing? See? She'll take out her anger on you. A woman's fury is hard to control. Man, I think this will get rough. Well, don't get too mad, Caster. Assassin is fighting Saber right now. I do not know who that samurai is, but he's a strong swordsman to keep Saber at bay. Should you not praise him instead? Even though he's facing his enemy, there's no tension in Archer. Caster must have noticed that as well, as she regains her calm. <laughs> stop with the ridiculous talk. You cannot call him a heroic spirit if he cannot stop you. He is not strong enough to be called a swordsman. Oh, you sound like Assassin is your ally. So, your masters must be cooperating. There's no other explanation to this situation of having two servants in the same place. Yeah, literally, no other explanation for having many servants in one place. That could only that could be the only explanation. Castor is, is staring at Archer silently. I can't see her expression hidden behind the robe. But it seems Castor is bewildered. Is that true, Archer? That Saber's here and fighting a servant assassin? And that Assassin's Master and Caster's Master are cooperating? Yes, Assassin is guarding outside the gate, and Caster is hiding behind the gate. It is obvious that they are cooperating. It is not rare for Masters to team up. You and Ren are cooperating, to give an example. Oh, he is right now that he mentions it. Then that means there are two Masters here. I was wondering what you were going to say, but you are so off, Archer. Hmm? Oh, was I wrong? Man, I was confident that you two are allies. Yes, you are terribly wrong. Allies? I would cooperate with that dog? With that man under my... With the man that's under my control? Castor does not stop laughing. Her laugh is, un is so unsuitable that the tense atmosphere disperses. In contrast, Archer is gritting his teeth. I sense something that was not there before. Is not Caster's enmity, 
nor the magical energy surrounding this place. For the first time since he came to this place, Archer is showing his anonymity. Yes, your guess is correct, Archer. My master is not cooperating with anybody, and the same goes for Assassin's master. No, first of all, Assassin does not have a master. What? Assassin doesn't have a master? What does that mean? Every servant needs a master to exist. Weren't they supposed to disappear if they didn't have a supply of magical energy from their master? Caster, you broke the rule? Of course not. I haven't broken the rule. Magi summoned the servants, right? Then what is wrong with Caster, a Magi summoning a servant? The witch in the black robe laughs. That means... Servant Assassin is a heroic spirit summoned by Caster. A servant who controls a servant, huh? I see. That is why he is a fictional hero. As Assassin was summoned by an improper master, someone other than the proper Assassin was summoned. I don't mind. I don't mind that. It doesn't concern me who the heroic spirit is, as I only need to defeat them. But I'm sure that this is all under your judgment, is it not? Let me ask you, how did you arrive at that conclusion, Archer? Oh, it's just a hunch. Masters are Magi. When a Magi summons a familiar that is superior to him, I'm sure their relationship isn't that of a servant and master. It is only natural for the master to be on his guard against a familiar of greater power. If I were your master, I would not give any freedom to a witch. There is no way he would allow you to summon a servant that would, o that would only obey your orders. <laughs> it seems we have some intelligence. Alright, I shall dismiss your insult and deference to your cleverness. Caster glares at Archer as she laughs. There is only enmity between the two now. Enmity. I need to get better at pronouncing that word because it's used a lot in the... Uh in this visual novel. They're about seven meters apart. With the chart with the chart that Archer showed at school, he should be able to slash cast her even well, even before she can finish casting a spell. I understand now. Saber, Lancer and Rider, has strong magic resistance. It is on a different level from this guy behind me. It's hard to affect them with magic, therefore you cannot match them, since you are a Magus. Then it is only natural for you to resort to to resort to tactics. You broke the rules of summon servant assassin. You broke the rules of summon servant assassin. You created your territory here and collected souls from the people in this town. You don't fight yourself and merely observe the progress of the war. You go so far, so I assume you must have your master restrained. I'm sure he's a puppet like the stupid master here. She smiles. That sends a chill up my spine. She's not only collecting magical energy from the pre from the people in town. She's even treating her master as an object, like she treated me. You know, with Caster, most people would be okay with that. Caster's dangerous. She's not a pure threat like Berserker, but she must be the most troublesome enemy as, she's, as she worsens the situation without showing herself. As she worsens the situation without showing herself. Yes, you're right, Archer. But you're wrong if you think I'll be no match for you. It's easy for me to win the Holy Grail War. I'm working hard because I'm thinking about what comes after. I'm not working out a strategy in fear of you people. Oh, so you say it's easier to fear servants. Well said for a witch that only runs away. I did say so. I'm stronger than anyone here. Saber and Berserker aside, you shouldn't even be able to scratch me. You should be the one thinking about running away. I did not forgive you the, f the I did forgive you the first time, but there won't be a second time. I will give an appropriate punishment to those who call me a witch. Caster's robe distorts. The magical energy in the air becomes a dense fog and covers Caster's body. With it in front of him. This shall be interesting, so you say I can't even put a scratch on you. Archer murmurs in delight. Yes, you will not even be able to touch me. The black shadow answers. The knight in red laughs. Then I shall try once. If I cannot accomplish it in one try, I will entrust Saber with this task. And I think I'm actually going to end the episode there, just so that the fight can be all of next episode. Just because the fights of this are cool, and like they don't, I don't want to have to rush through it because my voice is already giving out. The way I was planning to record these was record three, take a break to do something else like some chores and whatnot, since I need to do a lot of cleaning. With the fight coming up, I don't want to have to rush through it at all. So, with that being said, oh gosh, it's been so long since I recorded any of these. My voice is not like I used to be able to record like six of these, not all back to back to back, but you know, like three, take a small break then another three, and then my voice would start to give out. But it's been so long that only after three, and three shorter episodes than I usually do, my voice is already like, please, please stop. I can't do any more voices, please stop. 
So yeah, with that being said, I'm going to go take a break so then we can do the next episode. So with that being said, I'll see y'all y'all then. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>